Yeah, okay. Good morning. Um, um, welcome to Morning Prayer from St. Michael's in Garmington. Um, it's Wednesday morning. It's Wednesday the 3rd of June. Um, it's really good to be with you. If you're watching live, it's it's really good uh, uh, to know that, you know, if you're watching it at a different time of day, that it might be something that is... is um, in some way, shape, or form, useful at this time for you to uh, to join in with or to hear. Um, and if you hit the button by accident and you think, "What am I watching?" I really don't want to be watching morning prayer. Uh, then just and click it and uh, and keep scrolling through your Facebook. That's fantastic. Um, today. Um, is the commemoration day of the Martyrs of Uganda, uh, 1886 and 1978. Uh, so we, we remember those. Uh, for many of us, we, we obviously, we won't remember the 1886, but we, will remember 1978 and we will remember um, the people of Uganda at that time, people living uh, in that land. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty is above the heavens, is praised, out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals? that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings, that you should seek them out. You have made them a little lower than the angels and you have crowned them with glory. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the seas, and whatsoever moves on the path of the sea. O oh Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. The night is past and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Our psalm is uh, 119, but it's verses 153 to the end. You know what? We know Psalm 119 quite well, I think, uh, but it's it's not one of those that we always get to the end of. So we kind of use the first 20 odd verses and, and then stop. So um, let's go. Oh, consider my affliction and deliver me. For I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me according to your promise. Give me life. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your compassion, O Lord. Give me life according to your judgments. Many there are that persecute and oppress me, yet I do not swerve from your testimonies. It grieves me when I see the treacherous for they do not keep your words. Consider, O Lord, how I love your commandments. Give me life according to your loving kindness. The sum of your word is truth, and all your righteous judgments endure forever. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of you. I am as glad of your word as one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I hate and abhor them. 
but your love do I, your Lord do I love. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have they who love your law. Nothing shall make them stumble. Lord, I have looked for your salvation and I have fulfilled all your commandments. My soul has kept your testimonies and greatly have I loved them. I have kept your commandments and your testimonies and all my ways are before you. Let me cry, come before you, Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips shall pour forth at your praise. When you have taught me your statutes, my tongue shall sing of your word. All your commandments are righteous. Let your hand reach out to help me, for I have chosen your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let my soul live and it shall praise you, and let your judgments be my help. I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. O oh, seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Lord of mercy, swift to help us. As our lips pour forth your praise, fill our hearts with the peace you give. For those who wait for your salvation in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, so we get to Joshua 3. Early in the morning, Joshua rose and set out from Shittim with all the Israelites. And they came to the Jordan. They camped there before crossing over. At the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of your Lord, your God, being carried by the Levitical priests, then you shall set out from your place. Follow it so that you may know the way you should go. For you have not passed this way before. Yet there shall be space between you and it, a distance of about 2,000 2, cubits. Do not come any nearer to it. Then Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. So the priest Joshua said, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on in the front of the people. So that they took, so they took up the ark of the covenant, and they went in front of the people. And then the Lord said to Joshua, "This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, so that they may know that I be with you as I was with Moses. You are the one who shall command the priests who bear the ark of the covenant. When you come to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan." Joshua then said to the Israelites. Draw near and hear the words of the Lord your God. Joshua said, by this you shall know that you, uh, that among you is living God, who without fail will drive out before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Jezebites. The ark of the Lord, of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth is going to pass before you into the Jordan. So now select 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. When the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord and the Lord of all the earth rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan flowing around them shall be cut off and they shall stand in a single heap. When the people set out from their tents to cross the Jordan, the priests bearing the ark of the covenant were in front of the people. And now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of harvest. So when those who bore the Ark of the Covenant came to the Jordan and the feet of the priests bearing the Ark were dipped at the edge of the water, the waters flowing from above stood still rising up in a single heap, far off at Adam, the city that is beside Zarathan. While those flowing waters, while those flowing towards the Sea of the Araba, the Dead Sea, were wholly cut off. Then the people crossed over to the opposite over opposite Jericho. While all Israel was crossing over on dry ground, the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan until the entire nation had finished crossing over the Jordan. Um, Yeah. 
it's it's interesting um for me i am gonna confess that um some of the scriptures that are most difficult for me to deal with are, are not about god's dealing with individual situations and they're not about um Uh, they're, they're not the miracle texts. They're not those kind of things that are like, oh, yeah, did that really ever happen? The, the things that I struggle with most are, are some of these kind of um, takeover texts, really, um, in the, the Pentateuch, the kind of the beginning of, um, you know, the entrance into the, the promised land, this kind of fulfillment of that promise to Moses being uh, fulfilled in Joshua. And, and, and they're, they're really hard to assimilate into um, our life as it is, you know, I think uh, because of our, our media, but because of our written communication we have seen so many uh acts of takeover of people's lands and homes uh and, and we've seen so many acts of persecution and and when i read these scriptures i've, I've got to admit i i struggle to be able to disassociate um, some of what happens now in our modern times with some of these scriptures um, and I'd be much happier <laughs> um, as, a, as a priest I think if I could read these texts as God being present with the people at a given time. Um, but I, I struggle when I hear them almost as, as justification for, for actions. Um, almost for, from an aggressor's point of view, I guess in this particular scripture, you know, it's just about the people gathering and, and the Ark of the Covenant going before and and, and we'll get to um, Jericho and walls and stuff like that. But yeah, I, uh, yeah. Um, but I, I know too that, that God is a, a God who has purposes to fulfill and peoples with whom he does that. And um, yeah. I'm sure if I had to to preach on this, I'd I'd read and I'd speak more um, eruditely, but I but I think that this would also come into it. This sense of um, a promise being fulfilled, but not until Christ and the the um the recognizing of all people as being created equal before God, you know, this, this there's still this the separation in these texts I find difficult. Anyway, there you go. Um Luke 9, 37 to 50 says this on the next day when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him just then a man from the crowd shouted to teacher I beg you come and look at my son he is my only child suddenly a spirit seizes him and all at once he shrieks 
it throws him down in convulsions until he foams at the mouth and it mauls him and and scarcely will it leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, your faithless and perverse, you, you faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions, but Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy and gave him back to his father. And all were astounded at the greatness of God. While everyone was amazed at all that he was doing, he said to his disciples, let these words sink into your ears. The son of man is going to be betrayed into human hands. But they did not understand this saying. Its meaning was concealed from them so that they could not perceive it. And they were afraid to ask him about this saying. An argument arose among them as to which one of them was the greatest. But Jesus, aware of the inner thoughts, took a little child and he put it by his side and said to them, whoever welcomes this child in my name welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. And for the least among you, all of you is the greatest. John answered, Master, we saw someone casting demons out in your name and we tried to stop him because he does not follow us. But Jesus said to him, do not stop him for whoever is not against you is for you. Whoever is least amongst you is the greatest. And if somebody is not against you, then they're for you. There you go. There's a text that I kind of, I kind of find a lot, a lot easier. Um, I think, I think put together, there's this kind of like this understanding that, you know, to, to some are given power, but that power must be demonstrated uh, mercifully and justly um, and with love and charity at its centre. And uh, yeah, maybe maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay that those scriptures in which uh, authority is given to others, but but always with that regard, the least amongst you is the greatest. Um, So our response tree is quite useful as well. It says, Lord, will you guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory? Lord, will you guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory? For I am always with you and hold me by your right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, will you guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with your glory? Let's pray. Father, for those with authority, uh, for those who are given over um, the, the task of being in some ways in, um, in possession of the law and the land, uh, we ask for great wisdom that they would heed those words of Jesus, that the least amongst you is the greatest, that they would understand fully that those who are different uh, but do things in God's name but in good name uh, are to be regarded to. And we pray for, for nations that are uh, particularly divided, at this time you know it's almost like the there's a, yeah, a massive division in the, the states at the moment and we pray uh, for for restoration for understanding uh, in that land but we pray too that those who are most persecuted will um, be regarded um, as valuable, maybe as most valuable at this time.
uh, in our own communities? Would you rise up, uh, raise up those who are perceived to be most vulnerable? That we would continue as lockdown eases uh, to bear them uh, at the forefront of of our minds to um, to always include them in our decision makings to be always aware uh, to raise up their needs um, but also Lord uh, help us as communities to uh, accept new ways of hospitality, um, particularly thinking of those people who are who have felt that they haven't been able to offer or serve their own communities because of their own vulnerabilities, those who maybe have been isolating for a long time. Help us, Lord, to continue to remember them uh, as lockdown eases. Um, all that they have offered. Help us to uh, encourage one another in our strengths and our gifts. Making space uh, for those who are not always not always um, physically present to do that for themselves. We give you thanks for the way in which we've used internet much more. The way in which things are are, um, are, are kind of levelling certain areas of that playing field. Father, we pray that as locked... We pray that as lockdown eases that... Um, Yeah, that all playing fields would be levelled. Um, that there wouldn't become a vast divide between those who have financially and those who, who do not. Lord, we pray for wisdom in our leaders, and not just concerning our health and our mental health, uh, but also our economic well-being. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. O Lord, from whom all good things come, grant to us, your humble servants, that by your holy inspiration we may think those things that are good, and by your merciful guiding may perform the same through Jesus our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Um, person who's just phoned me I am just about to call you back um and um to the rest of you uh, I hope that you're well if um we're obviously going to be continuing to do this um but we're also continuing to send out uh our mailings with piece of music different reflections and things like that so if there's anything you want then just give me a shout pm me on facebook um wing me uh, an email or leave a message on one of these and I'll find them uh, at some point, hopefully quite soon. Take care uh, and speak to you soon. Bye.